Hello, and thanks for tuning in to episode 193 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I want to welcome you back to the show if you've been listening for a little while, or I want to thank you for tuning in if maybe this is your first episode. On Thursdays, we do topic episodes, and today's topic is about stress and stress drills and how stress affects martial arts and that whole ball of wax called stress. If you don't follow us much on social media, you may not know that we're closing in on episode 200, and we're actually doing something kind of fun for that. On Monday, June 26th, rather than have our typical Monday show released in the morning, we're going to be live streaming episode 200. It's going to be coming right from my home. I've got some friends coming by. We've, we're working on some guests. It's going to be a big deal. I don't even know how we're broadcasting it yet, to be honest, but it's going to happen. And got some things that that are in the works that I think you're going to like. 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, somehow I'm going to fill three hours of content on Monday, June 26th, episode 200. You can check out the event on the Whistlekick Facebook page. Otherwise, just stay tuned and and you'll know. (laughs) We'll make sure you know. Stress. Stress is one of those things that in small doses can have a really positive effect. It's only because we we care about something or because something is exercising some outside influence that stress even pops up. And if it's the right amount at the right time for the right reason, it can be really good. For example, getting a project done. There are plenty of people out there that are procrastinators that thrive on that stress and do their best work at that time. I'm sometimes one of those people. Now, meditation can help combat chronic stress, that lifestyle stress. But that's not what I'm talking about here. We don't have a lot of stress in our martial arts training, at least not after the initial uh, joining of a class and getting through white belt, maybe even yellow belt. For the most part, when you go to class to train, you're smiling, you're having a good time, you're going to learn some new things, you're going to sweat, you're going to be with your friends or at least people that you respect, and you're there to get better as a person. You might have some moments of stress. Maybe you don't do well in front of people. Maybe you're called to the front of the class to demonstrate something. There are times where you're going to have a little bit of stress. But overall, if we consider the percentage of time in your martial arts training that you are stressed versus not, it is overwhelmingly a non-stressful environment. The problem with that is that when we train for self-defense, we're training for a stressful situation in a non-stressful situation. And it's not just a mental difference. Stress doesn't just affect us in our brain, in our psyche. It's an actual biological, chemical difference. When you're stressed, your breathing changes, your heart rate changes. You have hormones released like adrenaline and you get tunnel vision. Your hearing changes. Your motor patterns change. You are no longer the veteran martial artist in times of a stressful self-defense situation. Your training means little because it doesn't apply in that situation. I don't care how many times you've won sparring matches in class or even in tournaments. It's a different ball game. The way I've best heard it expressed, we don't fall back on our training. We fall back on our lowest level of training. The things that you can do without thinking, without even being aware of doing them. For most of us, that's not very much. I witnessed this recently. I'm going to be vague about it. Some of you out there will know what I'm referencing that that know me personally. I was invited to help and and really more supervise a self-defense seminar that was put on here in Vermont not too long ago. And the whole thrust of that seminar, excuse me, the reason that this episode's coming out today was about stress and how people fell apart in a stressful situation. Veteran black belts had trouble in these admittedly made up stressful situations, knowing which end of the room was which. And I've seen similar things over the years. This is not new. This is not just, oh, you know, it was particular to this situation or this instructor or this environment or these people. No, this happens with everyone all over the place. One of my favorite things about the 
so-called reality-based martial arts programs that are coming out is that we're finally starting to address stress and stressful responses and how stress affects you as a martial artist in your training and in your hopefully never self-defense situations. These folks in this self-defense class, not a single one of them thought they were going to react the way they did as poorly as they did. Now, I'm not picking on them. If any of them are listening, you all did a great job. It's not that, again, these people reacted poorly. It's that we as human beings react poorly when we are stressed. How do we change that? We practice our martial arts under increasing amounts of stress. When someone starts as a white belt, you don't just throw them in and have them spar with three black belts at moderate contact. That's too much. We're really good in some ways at bringing people into martial arts and starting them off slowly. But there comes a time where we need to continue to ramp up that stress input to get more and more of a response. In most schools, not all, hopefully not yours, but in most, stress is never considered an input. We practice forms, we practice basics, we practice fighting, maybe weapons, maybe a number of other things. We don't practice stress. When we talk about stress from a martial arts perspective, it tends to come from the unknown. If you practice in varied situations, you get a better understanding of how your training is affected by environment. In fact, I did an episode on that, episode 113, different training environments. One of my favorite drills to induce stress is called dark alley. My original instructors, I don't know if they coined the term or if they made up the drill, but it's one when I travel around, I like to teach people because it can demonstrate how quickly stress has an impact. Here's what you do. And I may have talked about this drill on the show at some point, but if you haven't heard it, here's what it is. Take the class, split them in two, and you create two rows. People are facing each other as if they're going to work together. Then you pull one person out. Not from each group, just one person total. They come, they stand at the head of the two rows, they face away, and the person leading the drill goes through and designates certain people to be attackers. When that's done, the person at the head of the, the rows without knowing who's going to be attacking, turns around and walks through. And it is utterly amazing to me how quickly people, people that have been training for 20 years will fall apart because stress is something that they're not used to in that context. I'm not saying this to pick on anybody. That's not my goal here. My goal is to get people to realize that stress needs to be part of our training. And that's just one drill. There are a ton of drills. Anything that's going to induce sensory deprivation, whether you close people's eyes, put a blindfold over them, you put earmuffs on them, you turn off the lights, anything with skill deprivation, have people sitting on the ground or in a chair or have them hold something heavy in one arm to simulate a child or a bag of groceries, anything that has consequences. For example, instead of just training with, with dummy weapons, Train with dummy weapons and some old t-shirts. Put chalk on the weapons. The moment there comes a consequence from the engagement, from the drill, people's stress goes up, especially if there's someone that's competitive, especially if there's someone that considers themselves skilled. There are tons of drills on this subject. There's a lot of writing on this subject. There's more coming every day, and I think that's great. The more drills you can find, the better. Because what happens? The more you practice a certain drill, the more comfortable you become with it, the less stress that's induced. Some people call that stress inoculation. We're trying to vary that as much as possible so that when the inevitable, the heaven forbid situation comes up, you've been in enough different stressful situations with your martial arts training in different environments with different people that you have the best chance for survival. The ability to act under a stressful situation, a load of stress, is more important to self-defense than the ability to use techniques. You can be the most skilled martial artist in the world, but if you can't react because of stress, you will be paralyzed. 
contrary, if you are able to adapt to stress and you have no martial arts training, you can still sucker punch somebody in the head. This ability to react under stress is second only to the ability to avoid the situation that would warrant self-defense. Sometimes the line between the two, being able to function under stress and avoiding situations, can get kind of blurry. When I travel, I find very few schools that train these strategies, and I hope more do. I hope you out there as a student or an instructor or a school owner will see the importance of this and either add some of it to your curriculum or have a conversation with your instructor about adding it to your curriculum. If your instructor thinks that all the students would do very well in stressful situations, have them listen to this episode. Have them play Dark Alley. Yeah, with with younger groups, I phrase it as a game. But to watch people shut down, to watch them not know what to do when the person that they didn't think was going to act throws a punch to their head, you will not see beautiful blocking in that situation. I'd like to know what your drills, what your tactics for dealing with stress and training stressful situations in martial arts classes are. Let me know. Email them in, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Drop us a line on social media at whistlekick or leave your comments on the show notes page at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.